Hey everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to a tutorial for another fall quick and easy project. So as you know, I've been working on the fall fireside afghan design and I've been getting suggestions from all of you for stitches and Misty sent me a suggestion to use the stitch called falling leaves. I had never heard of that stitch and had never used it so I went and looked it up and I fell in love with it. So I decided to try using it for a small project first to see what I thought of this stitch and how it worked up and to see if I thought it would be a good one for the afghan and the project I made I really loved and decided to turn into a tutorial. So I decided to make a headband and when I told my daughter that she said you have to do the twisted headband with the knot in the front. That's what everybody's wearing right now. So that's what I did. I made a headband with the twist in the front using the falling leaf stitch, which is such a beautiful stitch. And I did it in two color combinations. This is such a quick project. It's an easy project. As a matter of fact, I took my husband's car in for service today and I made almost an entire headband while I was just sitting and waiting for the service, which did not take long at all. These are a great way to add a pop of color to your outfit, to cover your ears and keep them warm. It's so comfortable. I just love these and they'd make a great gift too. So if you wanna learn how to make this headband, grab your hook, grab your yarn, and let's get started. Okay, so I did this first headband using Stylecraft Special DK yarn, and I used the khaki, the copper, and the mustard for this headband. So since I'm doing another one, I'm gonna use different colors so I can switch up my headbands. So this time I'm going to use gold, this is the Stylecraft Special DK. Um, tomato. And claret. There we go. So those are the three colors I'm going to be using. And I'm also going to be using a four millimeter hook. And you can see here I'm using the ponies because I'm testing those this week. And I'll have a pair of scissors and yarn needles as well. Okay, I'm starting with my gold and the first thing I'm gonna do is slip knot and chain 18. Okay, now in the second chain from the hook, one, two, I'm just going to single crochet. So I'll put my hook in, yarn over, pull a loop up. I have two on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. And I'm going to single crochet in each chain across until I get to the end. And I will have 17 single crochets. And at the end of each single crochet row, which is every other row, in this pattern, I always check my stitches to make sure I still have 17, so I don't let myself get off track. So you may wanna do that, especially if you're a newer crocheter, but I find I can still get off track, so easier to just check quickly. Okay, and count your stitches here. Make sure you have 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just chain one, single crochet in that same stitch there. I turned my work after the chain one, I forgot to say that. And then you're gonna single crochet in every stitch across. Now, as you get to the last stitch, your 17th stitch, you're gonna put your hook in, pull up a loop, and stop right there, because that's where we're going to change colors. For the next color, I'm gonna use the tomato, and this is the first row of our leaf stitch pattern. So, all I'm gonna do is take, just kinda make a little loop, fold this in half, 
and then pull that through my two loops on my hook to finish my single crochet, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn my work. All right, so at this point, what I normally do is I cut off the color I was working with right about where the tail is for my new color. Because I like to work over the tail so I don't have to weave them in at the end. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna snip that. All right. And I'm going to lay both tails across the top here and just work over them. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of tails at the end. So now we chained three in this first space and that counts as our first double crochet. So we're gonna double crochet in the next space. There's one. And in the next space, another double crochet. And then one more in the next space. So now you're gonna have a total of four double crochets. That's including that chain three, one, two, three, four. Now, for the next stitch, instead of going into the stitch, we're going to go around this post. And the post always sits to the left of the stitch. Okay, so this post goes with this stitch. So you wanna make sure you're going around the correct one. Okay, so here's the stitch, here's the post. What we're gonna do is yarn over and you're gonna go behind that post and then back out. So the post sits across the front, just like a front post double crochet, except we're not gonna do that. We're gonna yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over again, go back under that post again, just like that. Yarn over, pull through with a loop. Now you have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through four of them. And you see they kind of hang out together and leave the other guy anyway. And then yarn over and pull through both of those. Okay. Then you gotta make sure, so my last stitch was in this stitch here. This, that we just did goes for that stitch. So this is my next stitch. So in that next stitch, I'm going to double crochet. I'm holding my tails there also, just so I can go over them. And also in the next two stitches, I'm going to do a double crochet in each. Okay, so, so far I have the four in the beginning, my little leaf, and then three more. Now I'm gonna do another one of these drops. So this stitch goes with this post. So in my next stitch, I'm gonna go around this post here. So I'm gonna yarn over, go underneath and back out so that post is sitting on top of my hook. Yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, Again, go under that post again, there. Yarn over, pull up another loop. Okay, so I have five on my hook. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through four. Getting caught there. There we go. And then yarn over and pull through two. There we go, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna continue that way along. We're gonna do, in the next three stitches, a double crochet in each, and then we're gonna do that leaf stitch again.
Okay, and now we're up to the next stitch, which is this stitch and the post right to the left of it. So I'm going to yarn over, go under that post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go under that post again, yarn over, pull up a loop. I have five on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through four of them, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and then I have four stitches left. I'm going to do a double crochet in each. One. And this will match our other side where we have four in the beginning. Two. Three. And four. Okay. Now the tail of my orange is hanging out there, so I'll just snip that off. And if I look on the back, my yellow was weaved in until back there, and you can snip that off too if you like, whatever you like to do. Now, in between each leaf row, we're gonna do a row of single crochets. So we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and in that same stitch, we're gonna do a single crochet and all the way across. Do a single crochet in each stitch, and you should have 17 at the end. We're gonna change colors at the end, so we're gonna do that same thing where we don't finish the last stitch. So this is 16. Our last single crochet happens in the top of our chain three, because remember that chain three counted as a double crochet. So one, two, three, right in the top of that chain there. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, and this is where I'm gonna change colors again. Okay, so for this round, I'm gonna use the claret color. So I'm gonna just pull that through my tomato color there, okay. I'm gonna chain three with my working yarn. One, two, three, and turn my work. And then just like before, I'm going to snip my orange at about the length of my new color tail. There we go. And we're on our way with this. So now for this row, what we're going to do is we're going to do a double crochet in the next space, not because this is counting as a double crochet. So we're going to go double crochet in the next space. And then we're going to do our leaf right here. Okay, so you're going to have the two double crochets. And in this stitch, and the post is right to the left of it, that's where we're doing the leaf. So you're going to yarn over, go underneath. Now it's much easier than it was in the first row. In the first row, we were going under a single crochet. Now we're going under a double crochet. It's much easier. You're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over again, go back under that double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now you have five on your hook. Two, three, four. We're gonna yarn over, pull through the first four. Yarn over and pull through the last two, just like that. Then in our next stitch, now remember you can look on the back here. This went into this stitch. This stitch is the one we just did. So this is our next stitch. We're going to do a double crochet and you will definitely get used to looking at this. And then in the next two stitches, we're going to do a double crochet in each. And then in the next, we're going to do that leaf stitch again, yarn over, go under the double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go under the double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through four, and yarn over and pull through two, 
There we go. And then we're going to do a double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So all we really did was offset this row from the other row by starting our leaf earlier, but then it's the three double crochets between the leaf stitches and then the leaf stitch. So it's really the same thing, it's just we're offsetting. Okay, time to do another leaf here. So I'm using the ponies and I'm going to review them. I notice I'm getting caught up on them. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's an inline hook and I have difficulty with them, but we'll see how it goes as I'm using them. Okay, and then we're gonna do three double crochets, you see? And it's probably the way I use it. I'm not used to the inline. As far as the smoothness of the hook, seems pretty good so far. So. It's just that part there with the hook. Okay, now as we're getting toward the end, I just did my three double crochets. This is my next leaf stitch here. I'm gonna go under, pull up, under again, pull up, pull through four, and pull through two. And I'm left with two, which makes sense because in the beginning, I started out with two, my double crochet uh, my chain three and my double crochet. So at the end, I'm going to have two double crochets, one in each stitch. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to chain one and turn, and this is my single crochet row. So right into that first stitch, right where I chained, I'm going to do a single crochet and all the way across. I'll get ready to switch colors at the end. So on my 17th stitch, I'll stop halfway and switch colors again. This is 16. And then in the top of my chain three, I'm going to insert my hook, one, two, three, sometimes it's hard to see, pull up a loop, and then I'm going to switch back to my gold color. Pull that through, drop the tail, and with the working yarn, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three, turn my work. And again, I will snip the color that I was just using. And then that way I can lay these along the top and work over them, which I did not do for the last row. I totally forgot, so I'm gonna to have to weave those in. So that's up to you. Okay, now that is the entire pattern. So what's gonna happen now, rows one and two were just the single crochets in the gold that was just your base. But from this point on, starting with row three, being the leaf and then three double crochets and then the leaf again and three double crochets and the leaf again, ending with four. Next row being row four, just a row of single crochets in that same color. Then the next row will be the leaf pattern, but with the two double crochets in the front, and then your leaf, and then three double crochets, leaf, three double crochets, and then the single crochet in that color. So starting with this row, row three, four, five, and six, you just keep repeating those over and over again. So with my gold, for example, I'm gonna do row three again, and all I'm gonna do is I have my double crochet in my first stitch, so I'm gonna do three more double crochets in the next three stitches. One, two, and again, I'm not weaving in my ends. I think it's easier for you to see if I don't have them laying across the top. I'll just weave in the beginning ends. Then in my next stitch, I'm gonna do my leaf down here. Oh, 
three, four, two, three, two, like that. And I'll continue on with my three double crochets in the next three stitches. And so on along my pattern and keep changing my colors. Now for my headband, I did a total of 56 rows, including these first two. So it's basically 28 colored stripes. Uh, if you wanna just count the colored stripes, remember each colored stripe is two rows because you have your leaf row and your single crochet row. So the best way I think to do this is once you get around the length that you think is right, just put it around your head and you want it to be a little snug. You have to pull it to shut it because then we're gonna also add the border which adds some space and it is a stretchy headband. Okay, so you're gonna continue just repeating rows three, four, five, and six and until you get to the length you want and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so as you're going, I just wanted to point out the pattern. If you understand what you're doing, you really don't need to think about the pattern for this. So what's happening each row is that you have these leaves that drop down. And every time you're on the back side, you're doing single crochets. Every time the wrong side's facing you, you're doing single crochets. The wrong side's actually pretty too, isn't it? <laughs> you could actually make that into a, this could be reversible. Anyway, so all you're doing is in the first row of drop leaves, you're gonna have your three chains as a double crochet and then three double crochets and then your leaf, which is that puff stitch where you drop down to the stitch below. And then three double crochets in the leaf, three double crochets in the leaf. Back side would be single crochets. The next side, if you look at your leaf, your next leaf is gonna be set offset by two. So you'll have two before, to after that other leaf. So you'll always know where you are, even if you aren't following the pattern and which row you're on. You, you can just look down to the row below and say, oh, my leaf is here. I need one, two before it, one, two after it. And then it's the same pattern. Instead of being the chain three and three double crochets for the first one, for your next leaf, it's just gonna be the chain three and one double crochet and then your leaf and then you'll be offset by two, and then you do the three double crochet in the leaf and the three double crochet in the leaf. So I just wanted to mention that because once you understand what you're doing, you don't have to follow the pattern. You can just look at it and tell where you are. Am I on the wrong side facing? I'm doing a row of single crochet, and that's it. Okay, so once you're finished, your 56 rows is what I did, but as I said, just wrap it around your head until it's, tight to close it. You don't want it to be really loose because this is a stretchy headband, okay? For my size head, 56 rows. I start with the two rows of single crochet. They're counted in my 56 rows in, in my gold color and I also end in the gold color. Another way of looking at it is it's 28 stripes of color. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, so, and you can make it bigger or smaller. All right, so now we're going to move on and put our edging on, which is very simple. So for this one here, I used the khaki color for my edging. And for this one, I'm gonna use the claret color, the dark red. I think that'll be pretty. I'm just gonna start uh, about the third stitch in, away from the corner. There we go. And I'm going to make a slip knot. Pull my yarn through. And I'm gonna just lay my tail along the edge and go right over it. 
And all I'm going to do is chain to close that and then do a single crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet in every stitch around. It's just a simple single crochet edging. And when I get to the corners, I'm just going to do two single crochets. That's all just to turn the corner. Now I have stitches along the top because I was working the rows this direction. Along the sides, you don't really have stitches. You're just going to find spots at the end of the rows to put your stitches in. This just finishes it off nicely. You could not put the edging on if you don't want to, but I really like the look of it. Okay, so in the corner, I'm gonna just do two single crochets, one, two in the same stitch. Then I'm gonna turn. Boy, that is one long tail. I'm gonna just turn it with me. I could cut it off there too, but. Okay, so I'm gonna just go in my next spot where I see a hole, and it's pretty easy to find spots all the way down. You see, I'm basically doing about one a row at the end of each row. So it's about two per color. Okay, so that's what that's looking like. It looks really nice. So you're gonna do that all the way around. You'll do two stitches in this corner, then single crochets, two stitches in this corner, then up the other side, two stitches in this corner, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now I'm coming to the last stitch here. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch and fasten off. And I'll weave in that end. Okay, so now we have the edging on. It looks nice and neat. I love that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the knot. We're going to create the knot. So the way to do that is we're going to turn this and fold it in half like this. Then you're going to take each side and fold it like this. So you have the wrong side facing out and you have your two sides like this. Then you're just going to slip one side inside the other like that and just line up your edges like that. It's like a little sandwich. <laughs> Getting hungry. It's almost dinner time. Okay, so then I'm going to take some yarn. I'm going to use the same color. And I'm going to thread my yarn needle. Okay. okay, I'm going to take my little sandwich and I'm just going to start going through, making sure I catch each piece. of the headband. I'm going to come through and I just kind of leave a little tail and hold it over and then I'm going to come back through each of the pieces and then go back through just making sure I catch them all
and we'll come back through. Again, catching all the pieces. And I'm going to keep doing this up and back. Till I have it all sewn together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just go back the other direction. I want to make sure this is pretty well sewn together. Okay, and then I'll just weave in through the top here, making sure. Pretty secure. Okay, so now that it's all woven together, all I have to do is turn it right side out. And there we have it. Our headband. How cute is that? I love these. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I'm considering starting a series of quick and easy tutorials, so let me know if you like this idea and if you like tutorials for small projects like this. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.